The idea of setting up our own off-grid homestead has been in the works for over four years. And 1,500 days later, here we are, in upstate New York. We got the dog, the baby is on the way, and all that's left to do next is build a tiny house, which we can use as our base camp for the summer while we start construction on some sort of cabin to make it through our first Catskill winter. All right, so today begins the first proper work day on our off-grid shelter. Of all the projects I have ever worked on, this is definitely the one I'm most excited about because this is going to be the first home we have as a family and we picked out the site. I measured these trees and it doesn't look like they will fall on the shelter. So this is Athena. She is a Kubota L35 tractor. I don't know exactly how old, but I think about 20 years or so. And it's honestly the coolest machine I've ever owned. It's so much fun to dig holes with this thing and drive around. And I feel like it's going to be an essential part of our homestead slash farm to have a machine like this that can actually get like real work done quickly. I forgot my earplugs. <laughs> Could be a long day of digging. I'm not very good at it so far. Much better. Wow, that was a shocking amount of work. I'm really grateful I have the tractor though because I don't think that's something I could have dug by hand. But seeing the whole foundation dig from above on the drone, it's honestly a little overwhelming to see how much dirt just got moved and how much more work there still is to do. But it's all right, just chip away at it bit by bit. All right, we have come to the next step of the process, which is tree felling. Whew. I found my tree, it looks pretty good. It's got a little bit of lean to it. It's not too far away from the shelter and has a pretty clear trajectory on where it can fall. So yeah, here we go. I took a nine hour chainsaw safety course with Game of Logging. Shout out to my instructor, Bill. Um, I hope you're not watching this. I'm probably gonna make a couple rookie mistakes, but I feel like after the course, the only way you really learn is by doing. So here we go. The first tree is down. Didn't go exactly to plan. I had to go a different escape route, but it did go where I wanted it to go. And that's a win for number one, honestly. There's a lot of room for improvement, but I feel like I'm not sure what happened with that wedge, if it was actually working or not. Like I said, we didn't cut any trees this small, so it's a little different. <laughs> I mean, it's all the same, but it's also not the same, you know? But yeah, super proud of that. It's a big step in the right direction.
So of all the different stages in this tiny house build, the part I was most nervous about turns out to have also been the most rewarding. Working with trees combines a lot of things I really enjoy. Using a chainsaw is a relatively simple skill, but there's plenty of room to improve over the course of a lifetime. Moving the logs around is probably the most intense physical labor I've ever done, but it's incredibly rewarding to work with your hands and see real change throughout the day. And a moderate dose of adrenaline keeps it all interesting because every tree presents its own unique challenge. Three minutes, five seconds. <clears throat> show you all my stuff? Show me everything. Wow, look at this. This is gonna be our home. Wow. How crazy. You dug pretty straight. Right? Yeah, I'm impressed. One day this will be a home. I am so grateful for everything that you're doing right now. You're building a house, I'm building a baby. Team effort, you know? So now we get to the part of the process that I have been dreading a little bit, which is leveling a 24 by 30 foot deck on the side of a hill by myself with all these big logs and no one to hold them. Hopefully I'll figure out a way to do it. I think I'm just gonna stake it out one more time, double check the measurements, and then just start one side at a time with like the four corner posts. <sighs> I wish there was like an easy way to do this, but I can't seem to think of one. So I ran into a bit of a problem, which is that I underestimated the slant of the hill and my back three logs aren't quite tall enough. So when the angle goes down towards the front, the front of the shelter would be slightly underground, which doesn't work. The logs I cut are 17 inches too short, and technically I could just raise them up in the dirt and pack them down and they would work, but they would be very wobbly because they wouldn't be embedded deep enough into the ground. So I guess what I need to do now is cut down one more tree, make three new longer logs out of that one, and then replace the three logs in the back of the structure. And yeah, it's probably like a four hour mistake, I don't know. We'll see how long it all takes. All right, good news. My rookie mistake has been fixed. I don't know if you can see this line, but that's actually level on the slope of the hill. So these had to be like a foot and a half taller than I had originally cut them. But now I have these I can use for something else. So I feel like it'll be nice. Now I'm just gonna level side to side and then we can get started. perfect but considering that I'm making these cuts with a chainsaw I don't have anyone to hold the beams for me it's actually pretty level I'm happy with that
So Dana's dad just stopped by, brought me this awesome hat, protect me from the sun, and he's gonna put in a couple hours work with me, so we are gonna get way more done because it is crazy how slow construction goes when you are just working on your own. But I feel like as a team of two, things are gonna go really quickly now. <sighs> deck is finally finished and now we are going to assemble the wall tent. It's 16 by 24 so hopefully the deck is the right size. That would be a bummer but I feel like everything is going to work out really well. It's been working out really well on this project so far. We designed the tiny house deck to sit directly below the wall tent down to the inch so that when it rains the tent keeps the wood below dry and we can avoid the cost and toxins of using treated lumber. If this strategy works well, we might even be able to replace the tent on top with a proper cabin one day, when the canvas begins to deteriorate in the future. But what I didn't anticipate about the raised deck is how much more challenging this made the initial tent setup. If I could go back in time, I'd get a group of 12 friends together for one hour, build the tent on flat ground, and then carry it over fully assembled without breaking a sweat. Alright, exciting moment in the project. The bed is finally 
done. I got this old headboard in just now. All right, so the next step is to build the kitchen. I mapped out the rough idea. This is the two burner propane stove, and then this is an old sink I bought. And basically the idea is that we want the stove to be in the center of the tent so that it has the maximum amount of space for heat and flames. All right, so the stove is installed. Um, because of the way the countertops turned out, it's a little too high for Dana to cook on. So I think I'm gonna save this stove for our next tiny home or cabin or whatever, and switch it out for a slightly smaller one, which I feel like is just easier to cook on. Unfortunately, I'm gonna have to figure out a whole set of adapters so that we can use the large propane tanks instead of the very small ones, but it looks better, I think. First set is done. I haven't screwed it down yet just because I need to finish the sink and a couple other things. Look at that, you're done. So the wall tent has its next piece of important equipment. This is just gonna be a temporary piece of equipment because I will build us a better, stronger, 
less toxic water tank in the future. But for now, we got this BPA-free 325 gallon tank. All right, the wall tent, our tiny home, is officially done. I don't even know how long it's been since I started this project, but it's a whole different season. Our family has a new member, and Dana and Max are actually on their way right now to come check it out. Wow. <laughs> oh, Max has the hiccups. Oh my gosh. Lou, it's so beautiful. I can't believe how clean it is, too. What? I mean, will they cook in this kitchen? <laughs> it's like the boat. Wow. Oh my gosh, Lou, you made the bed and everything. Max, look at this. Oh my gosh, it's literally, I cannot believe that you made this. From scratch, this is so crazy. And there's a balcony. Oh my gosh. This is so beautiful, babe. Oh my gosh, Lou, it's literally perfect. I can't believe it. I can't believe we have to live here. It's been like a really insane last few months. And I'm so looking forward to like getting into nature again. I feel like I'm coming into my own now that we have, he's two months old. I feel like a person again. I think he did it. <laughs> it's pretty crazy. We're gonna have a summer house. This is our summer house. How fancy is that? We don't have another house, but this is, this is really amazing, Lou. Honestly, when you said like we should live in a wall tent, I was a little bit skeptical because I didn't know what a wall tent was. And this is so much better than I even imagined. It's really bright in here. And all of the little details that you did with like the actual chainsawed wood make it so like homey. Like, oh honey, you wanna get out of here? Okay. Movie okay. over. <laughs> <laughs> and just like that, <laughs> we stopped filming. <laughs>